Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel I'm an Orange, and welcome to another video. This is a bit of a different video than I've ever done before. If you've been following me on social media, on Patreon, I've made different comments and posts about an upcoming Metal Earth class that I was doing. It was something that I, I'd worked with with the, my local library, and I'd also talking with someone at Fascinations. I don't know if they want their name mentioned, so I'm just going to kind of leave that out. But a contact that I have at Fascinations about I wanted to do a Maker's Monday class where I basically help people, introduce people to building Metal Earth models. Now, Maker Monday's classes, my local library has a series of programs called Maker Monday. And the idea is on Mondays they have some sort of educational class, builder's class, making class. They, it can be any array of things. There's been things about learning about the Raspberry Pi, which I took, and it's helped me to do things like put up a Raspberry Pi on my 3D printer, can build a Raspberry Pi that has retro games on it. There's been classes on drawing and artwork, classes on soldering and electronics. There's been classes, there was a class on, uh, on like meal prep and food and cooking, and it's just all kinds of things. It depends on what someone in the community wants to put on what someone in the, in the library wants to put together and I wanted to do something on Metal Earth. This has been in plan for quite a while. I kept it somewhat quiet at first. Excuse me, there's a bit of a fly flying around. I kept it somewhat quiet at first trying to get things together but thank you for Fascinations for donating a few models for me to get this started. I went with butterflies because while there are several easy models that one could go with. The butterflies give you the advantage of there's several different ones to choose from, they're painted, you can make them a bit unique and it gives the people attending the class kind of a chance to pick the model that they want to build to some degree. It was a first come first serve type thing but it, it gave it some bit of personalization, a bit more interest than just putting together, the, everyone puts together the same like simple building like the Washington Monument or something like that. I decided to go with the butterflies, and again, thanks to Fascinations for providing them to get this class kickstarted. The library advertised, and we scheduled a class, and we had people sign up. I limited it to 10 people so that it wouldn't get overwhelming for me. And what ended up happening is my understanding is a full 10 people did sign up for the class. We had one person that was kind of on standby who showed up in case there was an empty spot because honestly, when it comes to things like this, these are free classes. With something more important comes up people don't make it and that's understandable you know these are free classes that the library is offering there was no charge to take this class the, the models are actually supplied the tools are are available to build the model so people just sign up and show up and obviously a few people either change their mind or had something else come up because that happens at all it happens in most of these classes where at least one person doesn't show or shows up very late so that's kind of to be expected there was one personal standby in total out of the 10 slots I had seven adults show up and two of the adults bought, brought their kids which was fine this was all an open learning experience for me and I had put together a presentation to try and get things started and we gave it a shot and so what I'm going to do for this video this video is a bit different for me because I'm kind of going to do this video I want, I've recorded the event. I mostly focused on me, what what I was trying to do. I didn't want to put the camera on the people involved because there was, you know, I'm sure there were, I was afraid there would be questions about whether or not they wanted to be on YouTube. One of them was a little concerned about it, so I'm mostly, you know, going to focus on what I was doing in, in as far as holding the class and what I was saying. I wanted to record it, to share with others, and to share with myself to kind of build upon and maybe improve the process because I can already think of several things that I could do better because I do want to do this class again. But I also want to share this video with you and there's a lot of things I want to add to what happened. So what I've decided to do is basically what amounts to kind of a reaction video to my own video. So I thought about how I wanted to narrate it and I thought why don't I just sit down with the laptop, put the camera on me and actually watch the video and comment on what happened, what's going on in the background, what was my thought process, and what would I have done differently next time. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here. I've got my laptop just out of screen here in front of me. I've got the video queued up. I'm going to throw my headphones on. And, of course, through the power of editing, I'll be able to show you the video as I'm watching it. 
and I'm just going to kind of comment on and react to the things that happen in this class and, and the things, some of the things that I would like to do differently the next time. So, I had a friend who basically sat at the camera and I, I moved it around. I haven't watched the whole video yet, but I, I've only watched a, a little bit of it. But I had a friend who kind of moved the camera around because as as we start building, I, I knew I was going to and I did move around to the different people that were there to try to help them out. And I think the class went for two hours. I don't think I quite filmed the whole thing because towards the end some people were leaving and I, I kind of, I don't plan on showing the entire two hours. But let's get started. I'm going to put my headphones on and we're going to queue up this video and talk about what's going on. I've got my glasses on here so I can actually see what I'm doing in the video. But here I was of course waiting to make sure, give a few extra minutes for anybody who was running, running late to show up. And the camera person was sitting there, camera at the ready. And I'm like, yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and get this started. And they just barely had time to hit record. And this is how it went. Now, I had one table set up that's kind of in view. There was another table off to the side with the kids at it. And there was a TV screen that my laptop was plugged into because I had put together a bit of a slideshow slash PowerPoint presentation to assist with it, which is already slated to change. But let's get started. Let's get started with the class and here we go. I think we'll go ahead and start. My name is Brad. Uh, I have a YouTube channel by the name of Animal Orange. I build a lot of these 3D models. I've been doing this for about five years. Uh, Metal Earth models and other brand names as well. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of do a class where I introduce new people, help them out, because it's kind of a little bit of a learning curve sometimes with these models. And that's why I'm here today, to give this a try. See if I can't get some more people interested. How many here have ever heard of Metal Earth models? Kinda. Have you seen them at the craft store? Mm -hmm. These are the simple ones. I decided to start with butterfly models because they're pretty easy to put together. There's only a few connections. And the beauty is they all build the same way and you get to choose which butterfly you want. Because there's several other models. You'll notice I have some stuff set up back here. Some of the stuff at the front are also easy to do models. Now, what you can't see, I'm gonna pause it real quick. What you can't see is kind of beside where the camera was. And unfortunately, I didn't take a picture of it. I brought a few models to kind of display to the people there to kind of get an idea of what other things that they could build. Should they enjoy this process? Should they want to build more models? I brought a few things with. I think it was the uh, US, USS Missouri that I recently built that was a Black Knight. I brought that, which is a Peace Corps model. I bought Megatron from MU, but I also brought a number of Metal Earth models, some simple models like the Washington Monument, the One World Trade Center. There was some Legends models there, kind of one from different, like three, three from one from several different categories: Marvel, Bugs Bunny, and and uh, DC. And there were a few other anonymous models. And not a whole lot because I went over crowd things, but I was kind of referring to that. Some people had stopped and looked at that before they sat down, especially the kids. But that's what I'm referring to, and that's kind of off camera right here. But you didn't end up being everybody's building the same. So I thought I would give everybody a, a bit of a choice. We are going to put together a butterfly model today. But if you don't know what kind of models Metal Earth has, they have all kinds of different stuff to choose from. So if you enjoy building this model and you want to move on to something else, they have architecture, armor models, aviation. I had a whole list of different categories of models that they could put together just again to let people know oh, what kind of models Metal Earth has. Stuff like that, different kinds of tanks, military equipment, just they have a lot of licensed models. So if you're a Star Wars, Star Trek fan, Marvel fan, DC, I'm, I could read the whole list, but you kind of get the idea. There's a lot of different things that they make that you can choose from to build depending on your interest. And they have a lot of different brands out there, but we're mainly going to focus on the Metal Earth today. Metal Earth actually has models in other countries, so they go by different names, like Peace Cool is a Chinese name, they, they distribute these models from China, Tenyo, and then a lot of different copycat models you might find. I have to thank Code Wookie for this layout of logos that he put together. I just basically, with his permission, borrowed it. You might want to avoid it. 
metal or stuff is usually magnetic unless it's gold. It's usually better quality. I wanted this information to be available in case anybody asked, but I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it. From China. Honestly, this is all from China. Even these models. But they're a better quality, better quality control. That's mainly referring to some of the models on the bottom of copycat models. Again, I didn't want to go too deeply into this into this class unless someone asked, and no one really did. Now, I actually stopped, I wondered later on in the class whether or not I had actually commented on a bending back and forth because a number of people kind of started to go that way and I had to go around and say, hey, make sure that you, know, you want to clip the parts out. So I, if I was to do this class again, I think I would put a little more focus on that because some of the people were a bit aggressive in trying to get the parts out of the sheets. But everybody should have a pair of these to kind of clip the tabs out. They're a little bit sharp, but not too bad, so be a little careful. Don't this was mainly for the kids. Kids weren't really looking. Do that. Yeah. And then everybody should have some sort of tweezers to bend the tabs to connect the parts. They've got a little cap over them because some of these are a little bit pointy, not too bad. And I'll throw a few bigger tweezers in the middle of the table if you want to try these as well. It depends on what works best for you. So in hindsight, if I did this again, I probably would take a little more time to talk about why we have the tools and the fact that these parts are connected, the pieces are connected together with tabs that have to be folded. And that's why we're providing tweezers for you to manipulate and bend those tabs and probably spend a little more time talking about how the clippers are there to clip the parts out and to clip the areas where they're connected but not to actually clip the tabs which came into play later a few people I think actually clipped off some of the connection tabs which caused them problems and I, I didn't I should have in hindsight I should have known to warn people about that but I didn't. If you look at the package the instructions are actually on the back, which is a bit unusual for these models. Most of them have instructions inside, but because these are so simple, I probably should have said so simple. Probably should have said because there are so few steps, because I may have set the bar where I didn't mean to set it and misled a few people. I think probably a better way to put that was because there are so few steps, the instructions are on the back. They just put the instructions on the back. So you can see all the different steps, all the parts are numbered, and the assembly process just laid out very simply on the back. When you open it up, and if you'd like to go ahead and open it up now, <laughs> good question. I would suggest tapping a little bit. People got carried away, especially the kids. A little bit of a pause while the kids catch up. Give everybody a chance to catch up. Let me fast forward for a few bits in here. Now some of the people went ahead and started clipping the parts out right away. I was kind of waiting for everybody to get their packages open, get the sheets out, maybe talk about a little more. And one or two of the individuals just went straight to trying to clip the parts out, which is great. But one of the reasons I think I want to restructure things a little bit before we start opening things to talk about the caveats of this model. So you can find the part. If you look on the back, you see the parts that you want to start with are numbered. You pretty much go in order of the parts. So on the back of the instructions, you'll see you've got parts one, two, and three. So if you want to find those on the sheet, 
and just put those out. Right, you've got the little triangles that are attached. There's also 3D printers in that same room running in the background in case you hear hearing the whirring noises. Yeah. And these sometimes don't want to cut the first time. And I took a moment to go over to one of the other tables and, and help the kids kind of understand what's going on, clip out the parts, the proper way to do it, because again, they kind of, some of the people kind of attacked the model, and it's, I'm looking at this going, Th this isn't going to go well. And I spent a little extra time speaking with, with the kids, explaining what was going on. You know, it's, if you can keep them in order so you don't get mix them up, go ahead and cut them all out. Some people will actually lay them out and just cut them all first. I'm one of the people that cuts out what I need for the step, so I don't get confused, whatever works for you. But when everybody gets the first three pieces moved out or cut out, I'll kind of just give the next tip. This is me trying to get things back on track. You know, I haven't done this one time. Kind of lets me see what works and what doesn't work and what I can do to improve. So I think it'll go a long way to restructuring and a little more hand holding, if you will, to kind of make sure everybody stays in the same spot. A little more explanation before we open the package up. And some of the people are having problems with the, the cutters. Because honestly, I did bring some inexpensive cutters. I had taken some time before the class to build one of these models, one of the butterfly models, and I took pictures of some of the steps that I did, some of how the parts came together, how I was bending the tabs so that I could use that during the presentation, during the, the build as a reference point. You can see that popping up here and there. I ended up kind of going back and forth because people were in different places during the build. But I tried to take pictures of showing how to bend all the tabs at 90 degrees so that you can put the wings, the bottom and top and bottom parts of the wings together and how the bodies were supposed to be arranged when you put that together and how just how some of the things are supposed to look. It's more of a reference point. Like so whichever tweezers work best for you, just go around and bend these tabs at a 90 degree angle. And this is me explaining how to bend the tabs the first step. Now the library had purchased a lot of Pixnor tweezers, which are the kind that the little pointed ones that I use in a lot of my videos, the black handles. I had brought several of the silver tweezers that come in the Iconics models because I built quite a few kind of giving the people the option of using whichever tweezers worked better for them for bending the tabs. And there was also some magnifying glasses. Uh, they're basically, I think they're called helping hands, they're for like an electronic soldering class. But because they had several, we brought those out in case people were having problems seeing some of the parts. Yes. And that's one of the advantages of those type of tweezers. You even need to do the one in the inside. Right. Yeah. And the kids were having a difficult time. The parents were doing what they could to help them. I mean, it's, it's to be expected. But after maybe about 20, 30 minutes, the kids kind of lost interest and wanted to go do something else. The dad seemed to kind of lose interest pretty quick. The mom stuck with it and was trying to finish two of the models for her two kids but it just kind of got to a point where they ran out of time and needed to go and i understand that um so unfortunately i had to leave early i appreciate them coming but yeah i mean I'll, there are going to be more tabs we'll just take it one step at a time yeah. no. not Pick every piece has tabs that need to be like down it might make it more challenging and this is where I realized that I did not warn them to not clip off the tabs and what the tabs were. And there were at least two different people, probably more, who mistakenly either broke or clipped off some of the tabs holding parts together. And that caused the amount of trouble you would expect. One of the things that I would definitely do differently next time around, before we open, before we start clipping, is explaining what those tabs are, what their purpose is, and do not clip them off. That is a failure on my part. 
if the piece keeps falling out, you can try and put some super glue between it, put it back on, just let it dry and see if that'll hold it. Yeah. If you want to continue, otherwise, I do have one or two spares, but not the same one. If you want to try to spare your Okay. I, I just saw one of these today on my flowers. Oh yeah? It's just sort of sliding a little bit. <clears throat> Is that all right? Are you? And I spent a lot of time going back and forth between different people, just trying to make sure I was there to help them, help guide them to, to uh, give them advice, help a few people out of some sticky spots, explaining things, answering questions. We talked about glue. Because there were several models, like I said, there were several times where tabs got cut and the wings weren't staying in place. And I'm like, you know, unfortunately we don't have any here, but if you go home and get some super glue, some Loctite, then you can maybe glue these parts back together and stay. I mean, they're for demonstration, for, they're for looking at, not for playing with. side of one of the tweezers to bend them over. You can even kind of pinch them once they're down to give them nice and secure. Yeah, but you're still going to have these three tabs right here that we're not going to bend. We're just going to leave at a right angle. So those connect to the body later. Basically, once everybody got to the point of clipping the first three parts out and folding those tabs up at 90 degrees on part one, I kind of moved on and tried to get everybody back together and say, hey, you know, the next part is you put the other side of the wing on in the correct spot, you fold the tabs in, and you secure it. So I, I continued to kind of go through step-by-step -step process, waiting for everybody to catch up. But it did get to the point where like, the kids checked out, the mom had to leave, uh, there was one gentleman that was just kind of moving forward. There was one lady that really took on to this really well and was helping the person beside her. So people started to move out into the separate areas, which I can't, I, I didn't really think about that. But because I had basically taken and had slideshows of the different steps, I was able to easily go to my laptop and move back and forth to wherever was needed to help answer questions and help people along. So those those photos of how the tabs are supposed to be folded and how the parts come together were very helpful. And as far as trying to keep everybody on the same page, there's only so much you can do. I think it went pretty good and we managed okay. I just, like I said, I continue to go around the room helping different people as they needed to get them back on track, to answer questions, to fix problems. We did eventually run into some more broken parts you do, and these are very simplified and a little bit lacking. A little bit lacking. They kind of give you a tip about the what to do with the tabs up here. But yeah, they're they're very simplified. The more complicated models tend to have a little bit more guided instructions. But sometimes, yeah, it takes a little bit of experience to know. Hey, they forgot a step. Yeah, this is probably what I should do. That was a little bit of chit chat as people build built their models about some of the modifications people in the Miller family have done, like adding LED lights, painting models. So that was very positive that some of the people were showing interest in that. I was able to talk about, you know, if you like this, there's more models you can build. 
And if you're really good at customizing, which one lady was trying to actually cut a piece of metal out and use it to supplement a broken tab, that's not something I've done much of, but I know people out there have been really ingenuitive and really creative with using some of the spare metal to modify and make things. There are some people that get really creative with these models and modify them. I am not one of those people, but they are, there are those out there. Yeah, it takes some time to just kind of try test fit it. You may have to adjust it, straighten them up, whatever you need to do. So what part goes up on this? I would suggest try to get the top two tabs first. Mm -hmm. See how well the bottom one lines up, and if you need to adjust it, adjust it and try again. But more often than not, the tabs aren't going to push all the way through just because of how they are. But if you can at least get enough room to secure it, it'll work. And like I had mentioned before, there were times where I would go back to the laptop and switch the slide that I was on on the screen to kind of demonstrate to somebody who was maybe stuck in an area or not understanding you know, how things are supposed to come together. So the, the pictures that I took, and I have like this rig that I set up and I experimented with that attaches to a tripod, holds the camera out so that it points straight down. And I used that rig to take some close-up shots of a build to use those as an example in class. And that was very beneficial, I think, and will continue to be so in the future should I give more classes on building butterflies. And there was a point where one of the individuals had flexed the part, the body, well, they flexed the entire sheet, I think, back and forth as they fought to get the parts out. And what happened is one of the, I think the bottom half of the body, the last piece you put on, the seam broke and it broke into two pieces and the one lady that was beside her, not the, one, not the one who had the piece broke, but the lady beside her who was doing really well did talk about maybe fixing it, repairing it and I said you know I've got, I brought more models than were needed because I expected that at least one person would run into problems where they would just, they would need spare parts or need to just start over. So. I had actually opened one of the models to demonstrate what was inside and so I handed them that sheet and I was like you know just clip the same part out of that one because while the wings are different colors and different designs the bodies are all black so it's the same part so they continued forward with the other body piece to finish the model. Now at the same time the individual to the left of the one who had the broken part who tried to help and patch it up finished her model and then was like, do you mind if I do another one? I had another one already open, sure, go for it. She's like, she actually grabbed the sheet, do you mind if I do this one? I'm like, sure, fine, yeah, yeah go ahead, enjoy. So she actually started on the second butterfly and took the broken part and asked for some scotch tape and patched it up and cut the extra tape off and built two butterflies and ended up taking it off. So that was kind of awesome. So. I did have one person who not only made the model, excelled at it, repaired a broken one, and ended up going home with two butterflies. So that's really awesome. Oh, that was very cool. I learned from my mistakes and got it right the second time. I've known people to fix scratches in the paint with magic markers. Whatever works. <laughs> Whatever works. You're out of time. So about 40 minutes in, give or take, uh, the mother of the two kids continued to try and persist, but the kids were wandering around getting into things in the library and uh, decided to, you know, I'm just going to clean this up and take this home and I do apologize, but I, I, when I need to get the kids home and I completely understand. Hopefully hope is that maybe at least mom or dad will enjoy it and want to come back to it, but we'll see. Really well. You finished it almost as fast as I finished one the other day, and I've done these before. <laughs> now when we got to the part, we got the wings, front and back, the two different pieces, 
yeah. together. Then it comes time to attach those to the body. And that's probably the most difficult part of this build is each wing section has two tabs and one tab that have to be bent up to align with the holes. And those holes are slots and those tabs never completely line up unless you just bend them exactly right. You need to get them, they don't need to line completely up. As long as you can get like half the tab in and either the twist or fold it over, you're good to go. And I made some attempt to explain that to the people there, but some of them definitely had some trouble getting those three tabs lined up with the slot. One individual, uh, one gentleman struggled and struggled and struggled with it, but did not give up, did not give up, Got one piece on one wing section, started to attach the other, and I, I I didn't notice until it was too late. But when he attached the other, he flipped the model and put it on the other side, and then couldn't fold the pieces up. So we had to take that back off and fight to get it back on. And he 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 got it. He got the wings on the correct side, but then needed help folding the sides up. And as soon as he handed it to me, I grabbed it and the wing popped off. But we still, we got the body, sides of the, the body folded up. The other piece on, I had to help him line those tabs up. He's like, yeah, I didn't bring my reading glasses. I can't do this. So I, I helped him. And we got the body together. But the one set of wings just kept popping off. He's like, it's good enough. I'll go home. I'll put some glue on it. It'll be fine. Which, again, this is a free class to introduce the people so they can have the experience and get that first rough ride out of the way because even I had that when I, I my first model the Millennium Falcon went well but didn't turn out as nice as I'd like and it was fun but frustrating the second one I built was Darth Vader's TIE Fighter and I broke it I just completely ruined it and I almost gave, completely gave up on building these models and I got frustrated and I got mad and I was like I'm not wasting my money on this again but then I got to thinking, what did I do wrong? I reached out to a few others about what they did. And this, there wasn't many people to reach out to at that time. But I put two and two together from some reviews on Amazon. And I ended up going back to that model. And I made a video on what not to do. And I did the model again and I finished it and completed it. And that's what started this channel. So I know that there is every possibility that even though somebody left with a partially built, partially broken model, they'll go, you know, this was a challenge and this was fun. I could probably do better next time and they might pick it back up. And that's the kind of positive attitude I tried to maintain during this class and especially at the end of the class, you know. This is your opportunity to experience it and break it and get it wrong and go, let that sink in. What can I do better? I really enjoyed that. Let's try it again. It's what I'm hoping for. On the same size as the other part, like that. See what I mean? Well, it's an introduction, kids. So now you know what it's all about. So if you want to continue to do this further, you kind of have an idea of what to do and what not to do. Soft my list. Huh? Soft my list. Off your list? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I've said that before, and then I came back to it. So in the class went fairly well. Again, so I had seven people show up. Four of them left a little bit early because two were the kids, and there were situations. The other three adults stuck around, mostly finished their models. There was um, a couple of them had broken models that were going to go home and glue, but they all seemed to have fun. One person seemed very interested in, so maybe they will continue to want to build more models. One individual, when I when I asked, you know, how they felt. They were like, well, I didn't even ask. They were just like, oh, this is the one time I'm going to do this. So who knows? At least, you know, we, we've, we've exposed them to them. I've exposed them to the, to the Metal Earth models. We had some fun. And I've got a number of ideas of should I do this in the future, which I would like to do, how I would do it differently. I would definitely like to redo that slide or presentation that I have and take some pictures, focus it on, and say, you know, here's a part, here are the tabs of that part, you don't want to clip those off, here's the connection areas, you do want to clip that. You know, I want to go over the, the, the fold lines and the tabs. We'll spend a little more, more time on that, make people understand that things are connected by those tabs, you don't want to clip them off, you do want to clip the parts out, but you want to avoid 
bending the parts any more than is necessary and go over some of those details before we actually open the models and start putting things together and maybe try to make a little bit more of a point to keep people together through the steps at least in the beginning so there's definitely some things that I think really went really well having the tools there having people having the opportunity to pick the models they want to pick being able to move around the room and help people as you go as they went things that part went really well but as far as the the opening and, and giving everybody the information that they really needed kind of didn't do that as well as I should have and those are some of the improvements that I would like to make with pointing out the tabs what to cut what not to cut when to when not to be in what fold lines are stuff like that another thing that I would like to do is I just basically had a random selection of models to choose from if I did this class in the future I would like to have maybe limit it down to eight people just as more of a safeguard but have duplicates of each model so that if a person completely goofs up they have another model of the same butterfly that they can switch to to finish the thing up because I think a lot of us go through that when we first build models if it's not the first one it's one of the first ones we end up buying a, a duplicate or sending to Metal Earth to say hey can you send me spare parts to try and finish that model because there's just mistakes even me after a hundred builds there were still times I got into a model and there was an area that went differently than I expected or an area that I didn't compensate for I ended up breaking apart and having to go get spare parts or another model. I still, it doesn't happen to me nowhere near as much as it used to, but it's still prone to happen. And there's, there have been instances within the past year, two or three instances in the past year where I've had to say, hey, I gotta get some, get another model or request some spare parts to finish this up. So that about wraps that up. If you are a big time builder, enjoy building these models, you have a local library that has like a maker space in programs like this, certainly give it, a, give it a thought and see if maybe you could hold a class there locally to bring some more people into the hobby, have some people to build with. What I would like to do is hold one, two, three more classes on the on building Metal Earth models, maybe get a few people into it once there are a number of people that are into these models and wanting to build more, maybe start holding like an open class, open build session where Basically, there's a two-hour window at the library where you show up, you bring whatever model you want to build or what you're working on, or perhaps even what you're having trouble with, and I'll basically be there to help out, offer advice, even bring some of the tools that I use to build these models to maybe help you build a better model yourself. So I think that would be kind of fun if there were enough interest in it to have occasional open builds where you can help each other out, even maybe some of the other people showing up, helping other people out, and just talk about the models, chit chat, and just have a community experience. That would, that would be the ultimate goal, I guess, or at least a goal down the, down the road, but take it as it comes. I'm gonna leave it at that. As always, I thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel so that I can continue to move forward, you know, share, build videos, review videos, and so forth, and even do things like have this open class. It is through the years of experience in doing this and my love for these models and wanting to see other people get into it that I've decided to do this. And again, thank you to Metal Earth for supplying some models to kind of kickstart this program. As far as I know, no one else has done anything like this. And I'd, I'd kind of like to see more people try and give it a shot and see if you can't bring some more people into the hobby so that we have more people to share this, this Metal Earth family with. As always, thank you for watching and keep on keep it on specialty tools and things that I use to build these models. I'm just going to show up, you bring your kits that you're working on, models that you want to build, and I'll basically be there available to kind of help you with... What I, what I would like to do 